It is late 2025 and Squarespace has just released some crazy updates to the platform, things we never imagined they would do. Whether you have a website or you are a designer, this video is gonna walk you through some of these key updates that you wanna be on the lookout for. I'm gonna share the things I love and the things that make me hesitate just a bit with the direction they're going. So the first major update, which is not really newsworthy in my opinion, but I'll just mention it quickly, is they've set up a new dashboard if you are a Circle member, which is someone who designs Squarespace websites. As you can see here, there are different statuses. I am currently a platinum status, which is the highest status. We'll see if I keep that because I have to earn 3000 more points by the end of the year. We'll see if that happens. Oddly enough, it says I only have about $500 of referral payments, but if I do go into my impact account, I think there's more. I don't know why it's like that. It's a new dashboard. I think it's pretty cool. It would be awesome to customize the image. Maybe I could do that. I don't know. The biggest thing I'm kind of concerned about here is that if I go into a domain that I am managing, this dashboard header is just always here, which is like not useful to me. It, it's nice that it doesn't like load back at the top, but it's kind of weird that it's there. If that just, I don't need it. Anyway, but that's not really what's important. Let's talk about what is really important. They have released new features for pros or they're gonna start releasing these new features for pros, which include some very basic things if you are a designer. You're gonna know these things really well on any other tool, but it is cool that they're headed in this direction. The first and primary thing is you now have access to a layers panel. This is really going to help you design and manage your design well. So as you can see here on the screen, there is a panel here that has layers. It also has groups and you could put groups within groups. Very normal on Figma, but that has never been an option on Squarespace. And now you have that option here. You also have the option to hide things or show things depending on what you like for desktop and mobile. But the fun doesn't stop there. You also are going to get access to a ton of capabilities with animations, which is huge. I'm kind of laughing at this internally. I love that they're doing it. I have no diss here, but it basically looks like Framer in Squarespace branding. That's it. I really feel this just looks like Framer with some Squarespace branding on it. All right, let's take a look at your options here. So this is the transform field. In Framer, it's transform, and I'm not mad at it. Again, I'm not mad at it, but it is kind of the same thing. But now it's here, so that's great. You have all these different factors that you can use again very similar in framer and then they have some preset things here which is pretty cool another nice to have is that you can now add custom fonts natively without any custom code again it looks just like framer which i'm gonna have a note on in a minute but really really cool now my favorite feature here outside of being able to do a lot more with design is going to be this feature of safe sections the reason I love this is this does transcend Figma or Framer or any other tool out there. This unique feature works way better than any other platform that I know about, which is, let's say you build this section on this website. This is an H2 tag. This is an H3. The, the text below it is, is your body text, like large body. This image is here. The card is exactly as you want it. The animation is exactly as you want it. The whole setup is exactly as you want it. But you're, you want to use it across multiple sites. Check this out. You can hit this little heart. I'll hit play and it'll just play through. And then take this on any other Squarespace site that you have and then add it in as a save section. But what it does is you'll notice that it takes the branding Let's see if he scrolls. It takes the branding of that site and puts it in the right places, the right way, styles it exactly the way it should be for that website. This is probably, in my opinion, the best update that they have brought to the table because this really helps pros outside of the status quo. 
Status quo is to have layers. Status quo for websites in 2025 is to have animations. Status quo in 2025 is to have custom fonts. This takes everything to the next level because as a designer, what you can do is you could build out 30 sections you absolutely love. I already do this in my own way, but it's not custom to the brand. I build out 30 sections. I have to finagle them to make them look good for every single site. Now you have them preset and they could be really creatively unique to your client and how you build websites. So this one for me won my attention. Now, I am a little bummed out that I cannot demo all of this and show it to you, but I can show you layers. So here you could see I could click on a few sections and then I have layers here that show all the layers I have. I could hide it if I want and then adjust that accordingly. As of right now, it doesn't even have groups yet. So in the future, I will have a video walk you through all of that but I do want to introduce it to you to either get you excited or by the end of this video as I describe what my actual thoughts are here on what you need to consider if you are building sites on Squarespace and they are adding access finally to more of their API so before you were very limited in the amount of data that would go out of Squarespace to run your business, especially if you were doing anything commerce, it was a nightmare to get data to go out of Squarespace and be useful or go into Squarespace to be useful. Now it looks like they are opening the door here to a few other things. It's kind of funny that they use this shape because it literally cuts off the word. All good. I'm not going to be mad. Sounds like I'm a little frustrated. I'm not. I just... There's some stuff I, I, I see why they're doing it. We'll talk about in a minute. But the transaction API profiles, products, orders, and inventory. Looks like they are extending it out further, which is nice. But this all leads to the behemoth, which is called Beacon AI. This, in some ways, is going to replace the value of most web designers. Now, do I think the web design industry is over? Not at all. That's not the conversation here at all. But some of the core things you used to sell will no longer be things you sell. The services and the reason people hired you will not be the reason people hire you going into the future. These things are changing with AI. This can now give you your SEO score, tell you what to optimize, do it, you can work with the AI and do it pretty quickly. It'll give you ideas of how to set up a discount code. You could just type something in and it'll set up the discount code for you. Some of the things that your clients used to depend on you for now are changing. One of the best things here that I'm seeing isn't the Blueprint AI, the Product Composer, which actually, let me mention the Product Composer. You could upload an image. This is really cool. You could upload an image of a product and it will write in the title, description, give you a, a price recommendation, all these different things, which is pretty cool. But when it comes down to it, the AIO scanner, which is artificial intelligence optimization, that scanner is really interesting because it will go into uh, ChatGPT and then test out certain questions around your brand that it thinks are relevant and then tell you if you are showing up for them and if you're not. That way you could get a sense of how to optimize around that. Now this is all very new and so this tool is probably the most progressive I've seen in this industry that is built into a website. This would probably be my second most favorite release that they're bringing to the table. The ability to have safe sections that just inherit the brand that you drop it into alongside the AIO scanner are going to be two things that really take a site to the next level. So as you can see on my screen, these are questions that the AI said, hey, these are probably things that you should be showing up for. And then you go check in, you say, yeah, those are good questions. Then it'll go to ChatGPT ask those questions, which is awesome, and then tell you, hey, it looks like your brand is mentioned. Or it'll say, hey, your brand isn't mentioned. It'll also cite all the sources of where it got that information from, which is great. There will also be a lot of AI access within the tool. This one is probably the one I kind of cringe at because it kind of feels like it's going to answer everything, but it might not, which is on the right side, you'll be able to have this chat and maybe it could do some useful things. Maybe it could lead you down some rabbit trails that you probably shouldn't go down. Or if you were a designer designing a site, sending it to your client, and then they start asking random questions where all these discount codes are being created and all this stuff is being made that's just making the site messy. 
it might cause problems. So this part I'm a little concerned about initially seeing just a full chat feature that can execute tasks pretty quickly without a lot of like, let's say approval process is something that I am interested to see how it plays out. All right, so my thoughts after this initial impression of seeing all these updates, First and foremost, I love Paul and the entire team at Squarespace and all they are doing. They're really bringing a lot to life. I think one of the challenges that Squarespace faces today in 2025 moving into the future is the fundamentals of a website have transformed and it doesn't seem like there is a clear intent of following where the attention is going. In my opinion, and I'm not saying this lightly, as someone who's built on the platform for 10 years, I really don't think they are the best platform out there anymore. I think they are the most user-friendly for non-web designers, and it's why I use them. But over time, it kind of feels like they are pigeonholing themselves in a way that is not useful. This is what I mean. With Squarespace and other tools out there, the fundamental build of how you create a website and the user experience is kind of why I went to Squarespace. The user experience was friendly and easy so that I could pass it to a client and they would have a friendly and easy user interface. But now they don't. Now it's becoming more complicated. And now I could do more with it, which is awesome. But on the other end of it, it's like they are trying to make a lot more people happy and doing it in not the most conventional way or what I would say is the Squarespace way. Adding all these features in some ways are cool, but I didn't hear anything about locking these features down away from a client being able to use it because then it just could complicate it. Now there's like all this additional stuff that can happen. And yes, websites should grow and develop and all of that. But it's like, where are we going? Because that's the exact reason you don't use a fully robust tool like Framer or Webflow is because it's simpler to use for the client. I don't know, maybe I sound insane, I don't know. But for me, I'd rather just use Framer that gives me full flexibility, it's coded with React, and so if you wanna add any code to it, it all works seamlessly. There's not all these layers of things that you're having to maneuver through, it's really easy to create a beautiful website, and if you wanna customize it further, you could do that. It is all really, really straightforward, and is all very open. Now, there's no commerce experience on that side, so there's a big, big lack there. Totally understand that. But on the same side, Shopify is way better on commerce than Squarespace when it comes to scaling e-commerce. They do good e-commerce, decent e-commerce, but I'm kind of confused on the direction because now they're starting to look more like a Wix. And that to me is exactly why I don't use Wix because it's way too complicated. There's way too many layers and sections and things for the average user. Once you deliver a site to a client, you want to feel confident that they can manage it simply without having to teach them layers and, and stacks and groups and all of that stuff. There's a lot to go into that. Anyway, that is my soapbox. The other side of this is a lot of this to me, you could feel it. It's obvious. There's a lot of money plays being made. Squarespace payments is a huge money play. Invoicing is a huge money play. There's a lot of transaction fees and other stuff that is being played underneath to make more money from every individual customer. And so it's cool, but I really want my website to just be my website and manage it well and not have to worry about being locked into a platform and having to use all their tools. And if I don't, it doesn't work. That is really unfortunate and a lot of Squarespace is built that way. It's very similar to Apple in that way. You get into their ecosystem. They don't really work well with Windows. They don't make it simple or easy. They keep those ecosystems separate intentionally and that is to help boost their product. I understand it, but there is a level here where I know I'm like on a soapbox right now, but these are kind of some of the reasons I am curious what the next five years are going to look like for Squarespace. The direction they're headed is trying to earn more money from every individual customer, regardless of how much they're helping those specific customers, because there's such a wide range of customers. And I get it. There's like so many customers they're trying to make happy from like an actual shop, like store, physical store to a digital store 
to a hair salon to like everything in between. There's just so many different types of customers and there's so many different layers to the product, all of that, where other tools just really offer way more, way quicker, way easier. And they actually do everything you want them to do. They're harder to use at first, 100%, but they do everything you want. And if I want commerce experience, for the most part, if I really want e-commerce, it should be on Shopify. And if I just need commerce, there's a lot of tools out there that I could do transactions on that I could layer onto my framer site or whatever other tool you're considering. Again, I'm not hating on Squarespace and loving on framer. I just am a little interested to think where this is all going.